adding and subtracting rational numbers using fraction notation. So, to add and subtract fractions, we need to use common denominators. For example, if we have one-third and two-fifths, we have to figure out what a common denominator is, and in this case, that's fifteenths. This is a fairly easy one. So I write down that they both have to be out of 15. Then I figure out what do I have to multiply 3 by, which is 5. So I do the same on the top. And then what do I have to multiply 5 by, which is 3. And I do the same on the top. And then our next step is add numerators and leave the denominator exactly the same. If you'd like to add that into your notes, do that on the side. So the steps were common denominators, then make equivalent fractions, then add the numerators, 5 plus 6, and leave the denominator as fifteenths. Well, exactly the same thing is true when we use rational numbers that are negatives. And this is really the new part of this section for you. Um, that should be an extension from what we were doing with fractions in grade 8. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of this. So in this example I've got negative 2 fifths and I'm going to subtract 4 thirds. So the steps to this are, I can think about that as negative 2 fifths, take away 4 thirds. Again I need to make up my common denominators, so this is fifteenths and fifteenths and that means I times by 3, so on the top I also times by 3, and I times by 5, so on the top I also times by 5, and now we need to combine negative 6 minus 20, and so together negative 6 and negative 20 become negative 26 fifteenths. So we do really need to know our integer rules. Um, we need to be able to take negative 6, take away 20, and get that negative 26 fairly quickly. So you really need to know your multiplication, so you can do these ones. Um, I showed you a table method, or I can show you a table method in class for finding lowest common denominators, and you also need to know your integer rules, as I showed you in the black for this question here. Let's take a look at uh, three more examples negative four and one half plus three and a quarter. So with these ones the very first step is to change everything to improper fractions. You'll find a lot of things we do in this unit are just much easier to do with improper fractions. And when I do that I do four times two which is eight plus one is nine and then I add the negative sign back in and 3 times 4 is 12 plus 1 is 13 out of 4. I come up with a common denominator which in this case is fourths and I'm adding these two numbers together. Uh, this was a 13 that I don't have to really change but I do need to double this one. Multiply the bottom by 2 so I multiply the top by 2 and now integer rules. Negative 8 and positive 13 the negatives win by 5. Next example, uh, 6.3 repeating minus negative 1 and 3 fifths. So again, change to improper fractions. Well, before I can really even change to improper fractions, I need to realize what 6.3 repeating is as a fraction, because I don't want to mix fractions and decimals. They, uh, they, they're equivalent, they have equivalencies to them, but it's easier to deal with just fractions are just decimals, and in this section we're doing just fractions. So this is 6 and 1 third. Uh, 0.3 repeating is 1 third, or it's 3 over 9, because it's 3 repeating forever, which is 1 third. Uh, minus, uh, I'll just leave this as negative 1 and 3 fifths. Um, then I can say this is uh, 6 times 3 plus 1 is 19, 18 plus 1 is 19 thirds. Two negatives make a positive, and this is 5 plus 3, which is 8 fifths. And so I again get fifteenths. There's quite a few of them that are fifteenths in here. I have to multiply this by 5, 3 times 5 to get 15, so uh, 19 times 5 is 95. Uh, that was a little bit tricky, and I 
did that in my head. If you can't, you might have to, you know, grab a little piece of paper and do 19 times 5 on the side, uh, 45, oops, uh, 5, 9, there. And then you can erase it, or leave it, it doesn't really matter. And then uh, I can move on to the next one, so times by 3, times by 3, 24, and then 95 and 24, that ends in a 9, 119 fifteenths, and just do a quick check to see if it reduces. So 15 is 5 times 3, so the factors are 5 and 3, and the top doesn't divide by 5, because it would end in a 5 or a 0. Uh, could it divide by a 3? Well... Uh, the divisibility rule for 3 is that the numbers of the top, all the digits, would add up to a number divisible by 3. So 1 plus 1 plus 9, which is 11, 9, 10, 11, doesn't divide evenly by 3, so neither will 119. So that's a fully reduced fraction. Note, you do not need to change these fractions back into improper. I quite prefer... Uh, sorry, back into mixed fractions. I quite prefer improper fractions. Let's take a look at one last example. Negative 4 and 5 eighteenths, minus 2 and 4 fifteenths. So again, I... Oh, wow, this is uh, much more difficult. 4 times 18. So a little scrap piece of paper here. 4 times 18 is 32, so 72. So this is negative 72 plus 5 is 77 eighteenths minus 2 times 15 is 30 plus 4 is 34 fifteenths. Wow, I need a common denominator between 18 and 15. So again, a little scrap piece of paper over here. Uh, I like that latter method. So 18 and 15, they both divide by 3, which is 6 and 5. And then you do 3 times 6 times 5, which is 90. So I need to make these both out of 90. Uh, this one multiplies by 5. So I need to do 77 times 5 on the side. 35. 35 and 3 is 38. 385, and I need to do times 6, so I need to do 34 times 6 over on the side, 18 and 2 is 20, 204, and these are on the same team, so I'll give myself a little bit of space here, and since they're both negatives, they just combine together, they're on the same team, 589 90ths, I can check and see if they can reduce, uh, this is divisible by 10, and that isn't, this is divisible by 9 or 3, uh, can this divide by 3, 13 and 9 is 22, it doesn't divide by, 22 doesn't divide by 3, so it won't divide by 9 either, and that is a fully reduced fraction. Okay, that's all for this video.